here's the uh, wind max uh, one kilowatt wind turbine uh, looking at it from outside of the uh, shed where the charge controller and the batteries are and uh, so you can see we have very light wind uh, so you can see by the trees very little movement at all uh, just a little bit there's probably good I don't know five mile an hour wind somewhere in that neighborhood not not very strong at all but she's under load as you can see uh, she's turning you know quite well uh, so there's no no issue whatsoever whatsoever with uh, the generator turning in, in very light winds uh, I'll go inside the shed and show you that she's actually still hooked up to a load on the batteries uh, here's the setup right now we'll turn on the uh, voltage meter and as you can see it's steady at 3.35 3.34 uh, there's maybe 5 amps maybe yeah, about five amps or so being charged right now. So she's pretty charged up at this point. Uh, the batteries, of course, are down here. Uh, you can see the Coleman Air uh, charge controller uh, giving us a signal that uh, it's pretty well charged up. So everything's connected, everything's online. Uh, as you can see, there's a little fluctuation on the meter. That's because uh, obviously as the wind fluctuates and so does the voltage uh, going to the batteries. Uh, so they told, this is all good news, and I'll show you how I set it up from a, uh, a tower perspective. Here's one of the anchor points uh, for the tower. The other anchor point is on that end, and then the third anchor point, I only used three, uh, is on the other side of the, uh, of the shed. Uh, I followed the uh, recommendations from different websites as well as WinMax uh, web website. And we used a two inch galvanized pipe, uh, bought it at Lowe's, uh, and mounted the generator right on it. As you get it from uh, Windmax, the collar from the wind generator is made to fit specifically on a two inch pipe. So uh, it was a, uh, an extremely easy way to set it up. Right now, it's only 40 feet up in the air, and the trees all around me are good. 20 to 30 feet some of them so I don't have a whole lot of height uh, the second one that goes up is going to actually go into a fork on the top here we're going to add another 10 foot section so that'll raise it to 50 feet and then we're going to tee off the top and add two 10 foot sections at each end with uh, each generator on it so we will raise this tower a total of 20 feet uh, have the exactly same kind of wires on it. Everything's gonna stay the same and uh, It's just gonna be 60 feet high so you can see the what we did for a base uh, For the tower we used a uh, standard two inch galvanized pipe fittings uh, We cut one piece of pipe in half buried it into the ground and concreted it in everything's grounded properly uh, so it's a very easy way to set it up and it provides an excellent pivot point and stability for raising and lowering the tower. How we did that was by uh, taking an extra cable that you can probably see on the back here and we attached it to three different points. When we add the next uh, uh, pole to it, the next, ten, the, the next additional 10 feet, we're going to add another, another point to that. So it's going to be four points were lifting but the cable that you see uh, on the left there uh, in the middle is the racing cable and the way that it's set up it uh, it moves freely so as the tower raises the angle and the length of the cable that goes through the uh, attachment point actually changes dynamically so as to provide the proper uh, leverage and angle uh, for that and I will show you the other end of that tower and how we set it up so there's the uh, anchor point that I was telling you about there's some extra additional pipe that we're going to use for the second generator that's going to go on the main tower that we're looking at and then uh, we just use that piece of cable that hangs on the side of the building there 
and uh, we hooked it up essentially uh, to the uh, hitch on a, on a four-wheel drive uh, uh, avalanche that we have and that's how we race and lower the the tower so it's very very easy to do uh, one person can actually do it without a problem. I use my son to help me and he's great at, at, at that. But uh, in reality you can do it by yourself. Uh, as you can see it's turning very nicely. And there's hardly any wind at all. But she does quite a good job. This is the reason why I, uh, not, why I decided not to use a 24 volt charging system. Because at 24 volts right now I couldn't get a charge it's turning too slow for the amount of wind in my area so for this kind of wind in the afternoons I still get a little bit of charge by taking it down to 12 volts as you can see she's doing quite well she's charging once we race at another 20 feet the power the wind power is actually going to increase because I'm gonna catch better airflow that right now I'm missing because of the, the height of the trees all around me so anyways that's it I will update this video when I have the uh, the second uh, wind max, one kilowatt turbine. So that'll give me two kilowatts of uh, wind power at rated wind speed, and uh, I think we'll be good to go for a while. Take care.